Hello and welcome back to Digital Asset Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Today I was going through some news as I'm having a cup of coffee. And here's what I found. Major computing breakthrough. Copenhagen researchers can now achieve the quantum advantage. Universities of Copenhagen researchers have advanced their quantum technology to such a degree that classical computing technology can no longer keep up. They have developed a chip that, with financial backing, could be scaled up and used to build the quantum simulator of the future. Their results are now published in Science Advances. In the article they're discussing, first came Google, now researchers at the University of Copenhagen. Niels Bohr Institute, in collaboration with the University of Bochum, have joined Google in the race to build the world's first quantum computer with what they're calling a major breakthrough. But also, too, if we go back to the beginning, I believe IBM actually was the first to create the successful one, and then Google was the first to release it as far as to the media. So again... You can see it's starting to happen more globally. But you're going to need the quantum advantage, as they're calling it, the quantum computers for the new quantum financial system. So moving on, the IMF says universal central bank digital currency could reshape future of global payments. And again, to me, from my perspective, when I look at this, again, we basically could go back to IBM again because IBM had been working with Stellar and central banks for the past few years. Um, research shows that clearly, and we've discussed over the past year of this channel that the many banks that are already connected. So, But the IMS says a universally accepted central bank digital currency, the CBDC could radically transform the status quo of global payments and financial system. So in a new paper on the reserve currency landscape, the IMF highlights emerging trends in CBDC development and says a universal digital currency could benefit governments and consumers alike. Recently, the idea of a universal CBDC has also gained prominence. A synthetic hegemonic currency backed by a basket of CBDCs could provide more efficient domestic and cross-border payment services. And what do you think of when you think of cross-border? First thought that comes to my mind is XRP for wholesale and XLM for retail. Now, benefiting from the credibility of multiple central banks that support it, such an architecture could change the demand for reserves denominated in currencies in the basket based on their relative weight. So the paper points to Facebook's DM stablecoin, previously known as a Libra, as a private attempt to create a global stablecoin, G. SC, backed by a basket of fiat assets. And for me, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of the make of this as um, originally the Libra stablecoin was going to be built off Stronghold, which is built off Stellar. So it's going to be interesting again to see how they chose for their final destination. So the launch of a GSC could increase the demand for fiat reserve currencies that is backed by, but GSCs do not need to be backed by existing fiat reserve currencies and could themselves attain reserve currency status. It is also conceivable that more than one global stablecoin could become a reserve asset. And that's pretty much the way we've always believed it to be. Most likely each country would have their, or area I should say, would have their basic own reserve currency, their own stable coin or digital asset, and then the bridge would probably be like Ripple and Stellar as far as the uh, cross-border currency that's going to send them as those two have an internal built exchange. They're the two designed, they're the two that give an example without dispute from everyone in the fintech community. There are a lot of assets out there, but again, if you're not paying attention to the exact fine details, they appear to be competition, but the ones who will succeed will be integrated and interoperable, but not competition. As I've always said, I believe of the 5,000 assets we have today, and it coincides with what Brad Garlinghouse has said, there's only going to be about 1% of those most likely that will survive. And I believe that will bring us down to a solid number 
of about 50 assets that will be absolutely needed, necessary, and would be booming. The best way, I would say, if you, you're you looking at your assets, who is the team? Who's the team connected to? What is its use case? And how will it be expanded in the future, like scalability, etc.? If you can answer the three basic questions on your asset, it's most likely going to be a good asset. And again, here on this channel, we are very transparent. Two of our top favorites, probably now on an equal plane, would be Ripple and Stellar. So Coinbase files a confidential S1 ahead of the potential IPO, and Coinbase has taken the first step toward going public. Coinbase Global Inc. announced it has confidentially submitted a draft registration statement on Form S1 with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. The Form S-1 is expected to become effective after the SEC completes its review process and subject to market and other conditions, the firm said on Thursday. So as they stated, we expect the Form S-1 to become effective and for Coinbase to complete a public offering after the SEC completes its review process subject to market and other conditions. So this tweet does not constitute any offer or any securities for sale, Coinbase said in an accompanying tweet. So I think that's exciting. Yesterday's video, we discussed who they had chose, and there's all reasons for the developments we are seeing today. I want to end this video with a final article on the Stellar Development Foundation invests three million USD in the Settle Network. The investment to support Settle Network's product growth for world's first stablecoin exchange marks SDF's fourth enterprise fund investment in FY20 for the total of 9.265 million USD. So the SDF announced a strategic investment in Settle Network. You know what, let's just click on that really quick and pull it up and we'll show you what's going on here. And here's Settle. It's a borderless tech and infrastructure that bridges the gap between traditional and digital finance. Let's click here. Just go a little further into this for you so you can see how I would say it's amazing. So the Settle X is a suite of products that allow some of the largest on-demand companies, wallets and digital asset exchanges around the world to work with the most cost-efficient and commonly utilized domestic payment rails. What is it for? The Settle X enables compliant interoperability between local currency and digital asset through that suite of products. And again, you can click on these. I'll include the links as always with every video in the description below. Now back into this article. So that gives you a little reference of what Settle is. So the investment of up to 3 million USD is paid in lumens which help bolster Settle's current suite of payment tools centered around stablecoins fiat to crypto, the on-ramps for BTC and B2B users, the stablecoin issuance and marketplace, and stablecoin payment processing and merchant gateway. So Settle Network is delivering on the vision and mission of Stellar and putting blockchain tech and access to finance in the hands of people that need it, said Danell Dixon, the CEO and executive director of SDF. So with this shared mission driving us, our investment represents the tremendous success of Settle to date in serving LATAM communities, the L-A-T-A-M communities, and its potential to make stablecoin technology accessible and useful globally. So that's how together we scale and bring greater adoption of blockchain technology. So this is pretty exciting, uh, you know, especially if you hold Stellar's XLM, and I believe if you have the patience, you will see the rewards. Because as it says, the longer you hold, the more value your asset begins. And as the price begins to match its value, that's when you see the gains that you could only dream of. So that's pretty much my little coffee conversation for the day. But before I go, I want to leave you with a final thought. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of success. So again, this is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. Much love, and we'll catch you in the next one.